All right, everyone, welcome back. Uh, you see we have the, uh, the E-Flight EC1500 unboxed out on the table here, um, our kind of makeshift workbench here for tonight. And we're gonna go ahead and start the assembly process. Um, as you can see, I caught a lot of flack from my, my previous project, or I'm still working on, which is my uh, P51 Mustang, the 1.2 meter. Um, a lot of guys were complaining that, uh, you know what, it's a bind and fly. It should take you no more than 20 minutes to put it together, throw it in the air. Well, that's true. Um, if you don't want to uh, do everything that I want to do to the airplane, you probably can get it together in 20 minutes. Um, I don't see this one taking all that long to build either. Um, but you know what, instead of going through and detailing it all, painting it, stripping it down, and doing all sorts of extra work to it, um, I like the airplane as it is, so I'm just going to build it here for you. And we'll see how long it takes before we can do it. Um, I kind of quickly glanced over the instructions. I really haven't fully read every line item per se, but I did follow the steps at least for tonight, um, which is just the basic assembly of the aircraft. That's what we're gonna do. Then we'll move into actual um, setup of the airplane and getting everything ready to go for flying. But tonight we're just gonna simply assemble the aircraft to get it um, looking as if it's ready to fly. And then um, we'll come back and actually do a lot of the, um, the final tuning and everything on it. I said, I'm gonna paint the prop tips uh, before I fly it. So I will not be really torquing down the, uh, the props or anything tonight. I'll just kind of snug them up to go through the process and then I'll paint them uh, later, so. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, get started. All right, step one, according to our manual here, is the installation of the uh, the vertical tail assembly. Um, you know what's great about this is like all of it, it's all pre-wired, so it just drops in and away you go. Everything is, is wired already, so this thing's gonna be awesome. So let's go ahead. We're gonna need two of the uh, 20 millimeter screws, which I think we have in here. Uh, I tell you, they came with a lot of fasteners, so. We'll figure out what is what here, but we'll go ahead and get the uh, the tail um, installed. And it looks like it kind of like, you can see this little um, protrusion here on, on the front, this little like tongue almost. This actually fits in under the, uh, the fuselage and kind of locks it in. And then of course we have the, uh, the servo plug back here and then a couple of um, screw holes right here that are actually going to uh, secure it. All right, uh, the tail is installed, but the screws in, of course, you can see, it all of a sudden gets uh, pretty tail heavy. Uh, excuse me for one second, there's um, one of the cats is being ill-behaved over here, so I'll be back in one second. All right, that's what happens when a uh, cat finds found a golf ball, if you're wondering what that, uh, that noise was in the background. All right, let's dig out. We got a couple uh, self-tapping uh, screws here. Let's go ahead and get these. These are the 20 millimeter screws. It looks like they uh, they go in from this side over here. So the side that has the um, the servo sticking out of it is the side that these go on first. We only need a couple tools here. One of which is just a Phillips screwdriver. All right. So the uh, tail is assembled. That takes pretty it's a pretty quick process. Just uh, two screws and everything is plugged in. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what's next. All right, it looks like the uh, horizontal uh, stabilizer is next. Pretty simple here. So we got our two halves and our spar. All right, these just slide on. A little bit of trouble getting the, um, the spar through the, uh, the fuselage, but not, not too bad. Uh, just took a few extra moments there of, uh, of work. Okay. All right, uh, I 
imagine there's got to be some fasteners for that. Apparently they snap into position. All right, well, they snapped into position, all right. And there are no fasteners. Wow, that is that is interesting. Uh, uh, yeah. There's little retainer clips on the bottom. There he goes. Okay, so very interesting to note that. The, the horizontal stabilizer actually just snaps into place and it's got little uh, thumb uh, buttons in there that you can release it. So no tools at all necessary for that. It took me longer to figure that out than, uh, than anything else. Well, that, uh, that was very simple. Tell, get a little tail heavy over here. Um, a lot of hardware going on. Next step is gonna be the wing. So I'm gonna move the fuselage out of the way uh, just to give us some more room because we are gonna reconfigure the flap and the ailerons. All right, to do that, we are gonna to need to somehow disconnect the, um, looks like they're taped in. So uh, I'm gonna have to look at the instructions here a little bit just to make sure I'm, I'm doing this right. So what we wanna do is right now that the, uh, the aileron and the, the uh, outer flap are now connected. So this is kind of like um, more of an aerobatic type arrangement. Um, that's not how I wanna fly, I wanna fly more scale. I want a smaller aileron, bigger flap. I like to come in and, and shoot approaches with a lot more flap and I don't need crazy 3D uh, characteristics of the airplane. What's nice is with these little um, kind of connector joiner pieces here, you could switch between the two relatively easily. Um, I'm gonna switch it over to um, scale flying first and then we'll, we can always add these later. Um, but I need to figure out how to just take that apart and there's little little pieces of plastic joiners here and that's what actually go in between the uh, control surfaces and kind of link them together. All right, to uh, swap out the, uh, the clips here, uh, you simply, this is one of them that's already been removed. You slide this towards the, uh, the gap between the control surfaces and then they just pop out and then you get the, um, these small pieces here are numbered uh, to tell you and you just line up the number that's printed on the uh, joiner to the number that is printed on the uh, control surface. So that's how you align to know which one is which. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this and I simply push it in and then slide it back out. So this, you push it out to uh, install, push it in to remove, and that's as easy as it is to go ahead and re uh, switch the configuration of the airplane. Uh, it does have a little bit of uh, tape that came with it. Um, I don't know if the tape is still usable or not. If not, a little piece of scotch tape will most certainly um, make that um, stick again. Yeah, I guess the tape kind of works. So we'll go ahead and just put that back down as a, just to make sure that those actually stay put. Well, this one I think I wrecked. So um, not that big of a deal, we can fix that. The big takeaway here is make sure that um, you have both wings set up exactly the same, that you have, um, if you're gonna fly with um, the large flap or large aileron, that you fly with the same configuration on both wings and you also make sure you don't um, accidentally lock the ailerons and the flaps um, all together that would uh, that would be a very bad thing because now you can't move any of the surfaces because you've locked them all up so just make sure that um, you're aware of what you're doing here if you're gonna do something that's other than the way it came from the factory um, but it, it's pretty simple just be aware pay attention to what you're doing I'm gonna go ahead and do the other wing now There you go. Like most things, once you've done it once, it's even easier the, uh, the second time around. So go ahead and reinstall uh, the clips. It's actually a pretty uh, ingenious way of connecting these services and give you that versatility that this airplane uh, offers. So really, that's a, it's a pretty simple setup to go ahead and uh, make this change. Let me just add the, um, the clear tape back over it. Yeah, that's a real easy thing uh, to do. If uh, anyone has this plane in Real Flight 9, you'll know that you actually can pick uh, which version of this you want. You want the full, full uh, large aileron version or the large flat version. I've been flying only the larger flat version. Um, so, all right, let's go ahead and get the airplane back over here. Well, actually, before we can do that, it suggests that it's time to install the, um, the propellers first. So let's go ahead, a lot of little pieces of, uh, 
Foam everywhere. I'll be cleaning that up later. Let's grab our screwdriver here. By the way, the extra pieces that come in that bag are uh, mostly for the floats. Um, that's why I didn't understand exactly what they'll do. And I mean, if you really wanted to and you were one of these people that just cannot be seen flying with fixed landing gear, you could take these little plastic bits here. These fit over where the uh, the gear go, where the that's where the floats install. You could just cover over the gear and uh, fly it without gear, but I can't imagine why you'd want to do that. Um, I think that would be more difficult than anything else. So, all right, so let's take the collet apart. Uh, there's a washer in here. I just got to verify which side the washer goes on. Underneath the nut, which is exactly what I thought it should do. Now let's see, are these, are these marked at all? Which one is which? They are not. However, there is a diagram that tells you which way they point. So let me take a look at that. All right, so if you're looking at the airplane, the wing we have here should be this direction here. So once again, you know, whenever you ins you assemble an airplane, you get ready to fly it, you're gonna wanna pre-flight everything. And one of the things I would pre-flight is make sure that the props rotate in the right direction and they all, they're all they kind of rotating, so they're gonna rotate inward. Just make sure that they do that when, um, when you get ready to do your pre-flight. A lot of people miss that uh, on airplanes and that's a great way to have a serious problem on your hands. By the way, it looks like these are 10 millimeter um, uh, nuts on here, which is great because I have an 11 and a 12 millimeter with me. So I will have to uh, take care of that. But like I said, I'm just going to snug these up for today anyway. I'm going to be getting the um, the props back apart to paint them. So we'll worry about that later. Um, I'm not going to be hooking the battery up, not going to be binding it. So don't flip out and write me 100 messages about how I'm being dangerous by not torquing down that prop right now. The airplane is not going to fly right now. I'm just simply assembling it uh, to get it together. So. And like I said, I'm going to be painting the prop tips anyway, so just you can you can save yourself the time of uh, writing me an angry message about how uh, I'm doing that. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and get the other one installed. You just simply unscrew the um, the spinner from the uh, prop shaft here. This one's actually on there. Pretty good, whoever put this one on, uh, definitely got some torque on it. There we go. Not a problem, easily done. Pull that off. All right, so we have nut, washer, Collet goes on. Let's just check the uh, the orientation here. Check the orientation against the manual. Yeah, looks like these are right. Like I said, if you got counter rotating props or you know, really any twin, when you have the opportunity to put a prop in the wrong spot, just double check. Um, even my B-17 with all four engines and uh, they're all kind of rotating. Make sure you have the right prop and the right motor orientation. Nice thing about the, uh, the E-Flight models here, um, they're already pre-wired, so you don't have to worry about that portion of it. But uh, it's always good, and you know I'm a big fan of this, pre-flight, pre-flight, pre-flight. Check, quadruple check, double check, triple check, you name it. Make sure that before you put the airplane in the air, Everything is done um, and everything is working properly. And that includes checking AS3X. Make sure your AS3X is moving right. Make sure all your fasteners are tight. Everything is put together properly. Best to find those things out on the ground before you get it in the air. Uh, make sure your ailerons aren't reversed, things like that. With E-Flight has this airplane set up, that's less likely to be an issue um, because everything is already pre-assembled. But you know what? Things can happen at the factory too. So always 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 pre-check your airplanes it, it doesn't take that much longer um, I'm not a guy that's gonna go buy an airplane run to the airfield get it out of the box and get it in the air and then wonder why two seconds later it crashed because I forgot to pre-flight it um, just double check your stuff that's that's the main thing here let's go to the next step 
Huh. It's apparently us putting the wings on. No big surprise, since uh, we quickly ran out of parts with this thing. And um, we don't have much more to go. So let's go ahead and put the spar in first. I am really geeked about how uh, E-Flight put the, uh, these connectors together. I, I, I hope they use more of these. These are incredible. That's a really, ro I mean, these are the type of connectors that you would expect to find in your, in your car, in the garage, not on, a, on an RC plane. Awesome job, guys. I love it. Um, so from RC groups, I know a little bit about this next step. The very first time you uh, you put the wings on, it um, they may take a little finagling to get everything to work and get everything to line up just right. And then after a few times of coming on and off, they kind of work themselves in. So it may take me a few more moments here um, than normal, but not something um, that's going to be too big of an issue. All right, spar is in. Let's put this on. Well, that is a tight fit. Whoop! Be careful on this step. Um, you, if you let go of the airplane um, with this much weight over one side, you may find that um, it's going to fall off the table, uh, as I just found when I let go of it. So let's go ahead and get the other wing on so we can balance the airplane out. We got pieces of foam everywhere. We'll be getting the vacuum out when we're done. It's a little bit tricky here. Just I'm gonna. I don't want the airplane to fall. So one thing that you might want to do, and I can already see this being something I'm gonna do uh, going forward. Um, you might want to just sand the. Uh, put a small chamfer on the inside of um, this opening here for the uh, for the for the spar. That's a pretty tight fit and it doesn't really go together that well. So you know what, I'm just gonna add a small chamfer right now. In fact, I may actually um, sand a uh, chamfer on that and then put a chamfer on both of, uh, and I'm just talking just a little bit of, there you go. I just want a small amount of edge break there because I wanna help make the um, spar go in just a little bit easier. It got stuck there. Oh, that's much better. Yep, that's all it needed. I think there may have been a little burr on there as well or something, a little injection molding flash. All right, so now let's push these together. I think it goes like that, not too bad. I am covered in foam bits, that's all right. And yeah, these are little, little thumb screws. So we may have to still push the wings together a little bit to get everything to align up properly. I think they're pretty close. Uh, let's just try it. Um, I, I think this setup on here um, is vastly easier than what I had in my Cherokee, uh, which is an airplane I do not take apart. Um, it fits in my car. I don't need to take it apart. But um, I, I feel way more comfortable with this setup. I like this setup a lot. All right. Just kind of wiggle the wings a little bit more here. Go. Yeah, boy, I tell you what, this is, these are really easy to put in once you, once you get the wing aligned, like the very first time putting it together, um, expect just a little bit of a, I wouldn't say even a hassle, but just be aware that it may not slide in right away on the very first time, but uh, they're not bad to, um, to go. This one, this one here is actually pretty far off. Let me see what I can do on that one. There you go. And of course, being the first time you ever do something, you're not totally sure how everything is gonna go together. Oh, oh looks like there's actually a, um, there's a piece of plastic or something that is actually down inside. Piece of plastic or something that I can see sticking out inside here. There we go. We pulled that out of there. That should help. That might be why that one was not going together. The airplane, it, it, it definitely is such a big airplane. It can be a little, little tough to work around, actually, uh, if you're not used to this. And this one's still giving me a little bit of trouble. I may come back to this one. Uh, it looks like we have a little bit of misalignment here. Um, it's not too bad. It's one of those things where 
Um, an extra pair of hands at this point in time would be a little, a little helpful here. Yeah, like I said, it's it's a good size airplane, a little tough to uh, to figure out how to get around to it. And man, this thing is no joke. It's it's big. <laughs> it's big. It's but it's awesome. All right, let's try this. Let's try something a little different here. Yeah, it's a it's a little bit tough on this this one side, and I don't know why. It was definitely some. You got a little bit of misalignment in there. Um, all right, we'll come back to that. It's not that big of a deal. I don't want to spend half hour uh, messing with it. It's off just a little bit. I think there's some there's something stuck down inside there still that's causing a little bit of problem. But overall, that's the assembly of the um, EC fifteen hundred. It goes together remarkably well. Uh, a few things that I did point out yet in the um, unboxing video is the um, battery compartment. This just pulls off. It's magnetically held into place. Um, if you look down inside here, let me um, airplane around. Yeah, this, this sucker is big when you get it out. Um, it's got a balsa wood floor or a plywood floor. I can't tell which, but it's got a wooden floor. The other servo is uh, the plastic geared servo is actually the front nose gear, not the rear hatch. Uh, so everything else is metal gear except for the nose gear. It's got a separate um, servo for that, which I love that being separate. Uh, because if the nose gear takes any abuse, you don't have to worry about um, it damaging anything else. Uh, plenty of area here for, uh, for a battery. Of course, the receiver is already installed. Uh, something you might want to double check, of course, is make sure all your, uh, your plugs are plugged in. I can see one of mine is actually already just a touch, touch loose. Nothing bad, but like I said, just pre-flight everything. You'll be way happier if you do that. Uh, looks like this is the uh, battery elimination circuit is already installed. Uh, a little piece of masking tape, we can get rid of that. Uh, the other cool thing is if you're flying FPV, um, little nose hatch here so you can mount your camera. And if you're like me and you have some GoPros, this is, take the nose cone off, you fit a GoPro right inside there and do some really cool uh, aerial photography. And once again, that just pops on. But man, the assembly goes pretty well. Uh, it's an easy airplane to put together, no real issues except for this one thumb screw. Like I said, I will work on that. It's just that I don't, I don't really want to force anything and um, I'll just take some time to finesse that just a little bit. Uh, a couple tips that I would have is um, put a slight chamfer on the, um, on the spar or on the holes in the wing or, or even do both. And all that's to do is just make it go together just a little bit easier because they are a pretty snug fit. So you just want to do a little lead in chamfer to help these things kind of slide together. I'll take care of this little guy here. I don't anticipate that thumb screw being too big of an issue. Um, also make sure you have your vacuum cleaner ready to pick up all the little pieces of foam that will be stuck to everything. Um, for whatever reason, there seems to be more stuck on this airplane than I'm, I'm used to, but Hey, small price to pay for such an awesome, awesome airplane. So next steps, um, I'm going to be painting the, uh, the prop tips and adding the decals to it. As you can see, I did not do that yet this evening. You would not need to do that to go fly the plane. I just want to do that because I enjoy that type of a detail work. Um, but they, that's up to you guys as as owners and pilots of the aircraft um, The next step if you were to go fly this of course You'd want to make sure that the props are all tightened down properly and make sure they're really tight I'd also do um, before you we right before you take off I would do hold the tail and go to full throttle run up and then back power back down and just make sure that your props and everything are spinning in the right direction you got equal thrust on both sides and then your props stay attached uh, we'll, of course, uh, go set up a new program in our DX6 per the manual. Um, I always like to try to start with something new if possible. Uh, so I'll do a new entry for that. We'll bind up the airplane, we'll, and, or charge up the batteries, bind up the airplane. We'll go over what kind of batteries to use next. Um, and then we'll start to do uh, center of gravity and um, kind of start our pre-flight process. But if you guys get any questions or concerns on the uh, E-Flight EC1500, by all means, Leave your comments below in the comment section. I'd be more than happy to help out in any way possible. But man, I'm not gonna lie, this thing, <laughs> it, it's totally cool. It, it's cool, I'm not gonna lie. Um, Diehard Warbird guy, and here I am looking at this cargo plane, thinking this thing's totally cool. Yeah, it's not a P-51, yeah, it's not a Corsair, who cares? This thing is cool. I'm gonna really like it. Um, I've seen some people report that this is like one of the more most fun they've had flying an RC plane. And honestly, when you look at the versatility of the airplane and you, you look at the size and the shape, 
I can see why it's going to be so much fun. Um, I think it's going to get way more flight time than I would have ever imagined because it's just going to have the versatility where you can you never get bored with it. Um, you fly it off so many different surfaces. You can do the cargo drop with it. Um, 3S, 4S, uh, aerobatics, scale flying, GoPro, FPV. From a value standpoint, this thing brings a lot of value. Um, if one way, it's almost like a, a timber on steroids. It's got so much more versatility than just the timber head. And even I thought that had a lot of versatility to it. This thing's got even more. I think they've got a winner here. Um, I'm going to be showing it off to the uh, local RC club here uh, this coming weekend. That's why I want to kind of get it assembled. And like I said, living in Coast Guard City, USA, um, it's going to get Coast Guard uh, markings put on it. So uh, I may even add some additional graphics from Cali. So uh, that's it. That wraps up the, uh, the assembly video for the E-Flight EC-1500 cargo plane. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll talk to you later.